Hey guys, it's Andrew here. I'm back with another quick video. Today I wanted to show you something that I recently just built. I've been just working on it for a few days now and decided I would show it with you. But way back in the day, ESPN used to have a public API. And if you actually go to their homepage, and once you get to here, you can see right here there is a important announcement. And actually, it talks about how they discontinued the API back in uh, 2012, and people with existing uh, API keys would be able to use it until 2014. So this has been shut down for a while. And I was really bummed because I wanted to you know, get some live scores and schedules and stuff like that. So I decided I would make my own ESPN API. And pretty much my intent when I started this project was to scrape the data from ESPN's MLB scoreboard page, find the data, parse through it, and return it in a way that is easily consumable by a front end or any other method for that matter. So the page itself is pretty straightforward. So it has the list of scores and if the games haven't started yet, it gives a start time. There's actually a lot of information on this page alone. So I thought it would be cool to try to get as much information as I can and see if I was able to actually return it in a usable format. And it was actually a little more complicated than I originally thought it would be. So if we just view the page source here, it looks pretty st like straightforward, right? We can search for, if we try to find an example here, if we go to Red Sox, for example, you would think that we could just find this information somewhere on the body and um, parse it through the HTML tags and it would be pretty straightforward, right? Well, it was a little more complicated. So actually all this data is inside a script tag. So it was a little more complicated trying to get the data that I wanted out of it. So if you can see right here, this is the script that I found that I needed to use. So it has this leagues array, which just contains all the information for the for today's games. And you can see it's not formatted in a way that's easily consumable. So you can see that this is the script that I want to use. So this has all my data, any data I could ever ask for, for games that haven't started yet, games that are in progress, and games that have finished. So within this data I found out there's all the team information, a lot of the player information actually, like the, the team leaders and data like that and all the team information and all the team logos and the team colors and the team records and just a lot of information. I was actually very pleasantly surprised that it was all in this one place. But if you notice right here, it's not the most easily consumable, right? I can't just take the contents of the script and turn it into an object or parse it like it would be a regular JSON object. So what I ended up doing here is here's my code is I basically, the most time consuming part of this project was trying to figure out what information I needed, what, what extra information I needed to strip down. And then from there, it was actually pretty easy. So I'm using, uh, I'm just running a basic express uh, server, but for the actual fetching of the data, I'm pulling it in th just through node fetch. And then I'm using Cheerio to load it and be able to um, query the DOM essentially. So I found the script that I want and I grabbed the contents of that script. And then this stripped data is the, is the part that took a long time to try to figure out. And my linter is running, is yelling at me. So I'm just gonna fix this quick because it bothers me. There we go, sorry about that. So the first part was to replace the window.esbn.scoreboard data, which as you can see, it was at kind of the start of this script. And then if you scroll down to the very bottom, here we go. So, and then at the end here, the object essentially ends and then we get this if statement in just a few lines of JavaScript. So once I knew that that was the information or the extra code that was 
preventing me from turning this into a plain old JavaScript object. So once I knew what information I had to strip down, it was fairly easy. So you can see it's just several replace statements and there's probably a better way I could be doing this, but this is the most straightforward way in my mind. So we can see these two, um, these two JavaScript lines essentially, and then I'm splitting it on some cases and removing the end and then just trimming the white space. And once I did that, I was actually able to, I was actually able to parse the data and turn it into a regular JavaScript object. So that was awesome. And now at this point I had all the data that I needed. It was just way too much data. So essentially what I ended up doing is I have this um, scores array and I'm using TypeScript here. You can see me kind of messing with the types and trying to figure it out with ESLint and Prettier. And um, this was my first project from scratch, setting up uh, Prettier and ESLint with um, TypeScript as opposed to TSLint. So it took me a little bit to figure out how to get that up and running. And the reason why I wanted to use TypeScript was because with all the data that I was going to be pushing through, I wanted to have some, some good interfaces and some good types kind of acting as a model for the data. So I have this object called scores. It's actually just an array of objects. And all these keys, I just, it took some trial and error of trying to find these um, keys that I needed, just looking at the data, trying to figure out what information I want to return, essentially. My whole intent for this project, I guess, before was to turn this into a consumable API that has just a select amount of data and is easy to use and easy to navigate. And you can see I'm finding the home team and the way team here. I'm just deleting some keys, uh, like the links, UID, ID, uh, then the same thing for the away team as well. So a lot of that was just a lot of extra data that I didn't find a use for. Then here I'm just using the object spread syntax to add my score to my pre-existing scores array. You can see this is the data that I'm returning, right? So it has the start time of the game, uh, the short name. So for example, this would be like Red Sox, um, or I'll give you an example here. I have it up and running. So this is my API that's up and running. So you can see the short name is a KC at, boss, at BOS and the status. So which inning it's in, um, which state it's in, and the detail, the short detail, which sometimes are the same and if it's completed or not. And I liked using TypeScript because with this state, I was able to very easily, if I wanted to use this data more down the road and manipulate it more, you can see that it's really easy to figure out, you know, what are the available states? What kind of data am I looking for? And that's just a, another huge reason why I like TypeScript in this sense. And then we have the teams. So we have the away team and the home team, and for each team we have the display name, the alternate color, the color, um, the normal long display name, just the name of the team, um, the logo, the location, the abbreviation, if the team is active, which I think that means is, I'm not actually 100% 100% certain what that means, and then the score. So if you were trying to build out an application that was just pulling in the score from these teams, these are the fields that you would use. And then you can see that these are all the teams for today that are playing, all the scores and all the events. So if I go to one that hasn't started yet, you can see state is pre, and then the, the details are when the game starts in the status object, and then you get your same information, and the scores are at zeros. So the way I have this project structured is I have this MLB events um, function that pulls in the data and parses it and returns the data and, and sets it to the scores array. And then essentially I have this start schedule function which fetches the data once when I start the application. And then every 30 seconds we'll fetch the data again and update the scores. So it's not calling this whole thing every time somebody's hitting the endpoint. So this is my kind of a roundabout way of caching because it takes a, a while to do all the scraping and the parsing. Um, it just prevents less 
uh, network calls reaching out to the ESPN website. So I have that running every 30 seconds and then I just have a basic um, route here. So this is um, the full route is API v1 sports slash baseball slash MLB slash events. And the only reason I chose that kind of long verbose route was because that was the original. I'll go back to here. Go to scores. That was the original route. And you can see this is it right here. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy this. Let me know if you guys want to see me make another API from scraping data. Um, I would not recommend using this. I also want to make this perfectly clear that this was just for fun and for expanding my knowledge of web scraping and APIs. I would not recommend doing this for an actual production site or anything you plan to make money off or profit from in any way because you're completely stealing ESPN's data. And while this is a cool example, um, there are better ways to do this if you want to be set up for success in the long run. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any other API ideas that you would want me to build. My computer's about to die, so I will see you guys next time.